Hi there, uh, this is Mark Hopkins and I am passionate. Uh, what am I passionate about? Well, I'm passionate about lots and lots of things. Um, I'm probably most passionate about regrets uh, and ensuring that we don't have regrets. And this is what I'd like to chat to you about today. I would like to chat to you about some bizarre things that I don't know if it's older or I have more life experiences or certain roadblocks get in the way or health issues in loved ones. I don't know what it is, to be honest. Uh, I think it's probably a concoction of of all those things that I've just mentioned. Um, And it starts making me ask different things and look at different things. So it is, um, I'm recording this on a Monday. It's a Monday just before lunch. Um, I had an awesome trip this morning to take my son to school. They went for a really cool run on the beachfront. Um, and then I've been out of meetings and I've been hard at work, grafting and grafting and grafting. And why am I sharing you this? Well, I'm sharing this with you because you always ask yourself why. Um, and I'd like to pose quite an interesting question for you Um, and I've got a feeling that out of everybody who listens to this I think there might be a handful or maybe less than a handful who actually can answer yes to this question and as we sit here now I'm one of those people who is going to answer this question No. And this thing all came to me this morning. And it was a question that came to me this morning that I have put into my diary to do this afternoon. So what is the question? Well, here's the reality. The reality is that most of us have to work um, in order to sustain a life. Uh, Our basic needs, food, water, shelter. We have to work in order to accumulate some sort of wealth. Uh, to provide the basic needs that we require. In order to get that job, we have to apply for work. And the application process normally consists of two things. There's an initial uh, communication, which is 99% time, uh, 99% of the time is a CV. And then the second part of the process is an interview. And at the end of that interview, you go to the Uh, offer stage and then a bit of negotiation then you get the job that's normally what happens so what do we do well we spend time preparing and working on our cv we ensure that it has the right things in it on it has the right words has the right experience has all the cool things that we know the people are are looking for and we spend our lives building that cv we start off with our first job and our first getting our first job is quite challenging because we've just put down our education and our interests and some achievements that we've had outside the workplace. And we hope that that's enough to get us through the front door. And then once we're in the front door, we spend the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years developing that sea so we can land our dream job at some point in the future. So we spend our working career trying to build our CV. And our CV is geared to one thing, which is getting a job. So here's the question I have for you. And like I said, as we currently sit, I'm going to answer no to this question. The question is, do you also have a life CV? So we have a work CV. And what does a work CV? It has dates and it has job titles and it has things that we delivered and achieved and tasks that we did. Now, what's your life CV state? What's What is on your life CV? And what is your life CV working towards? Your work CV is working towards your dream job. Now, is your life CV working towards your dream life? So I'm going to now go and build my life CV. And what my life CV is going to have all the events that I have had in my life. And it's going to Start collating all the experiences and the ways that that has influenced me. So I start off when I was 12, ruptured my spleen in the in Mallorca, and I was pretty semi-conscious. I've lost a lot, a lot of blood. Um, didn't speak much. Obviously, spoke no Spanish at that, that age, but I clearly remember 
overhearing the surgeon go to my parents and say, you might want to say goodbye because this is touch and go. And seeing their faces through those the portholes in the in the hospital as I got rushed in, and that really really affected me as a young kid. Um, obviously, that that sense of I'm actually I could die. Um, so that's that's probably the first thing that would go on to my my life CV. And that life that my my CV is probably going to be pages and pages of uh, uh, long. Parents divorce, death of role models meningitis, um, goes on and on and on and on and on and on and um, dealt with a lot of grief and loss. Um, but that changes you, that impacts you, that makes you have things um, that enables you to see the world in a slightly different way. And I'm not sure if we spend enough time, well, I know we're not sure, I know we don't spend enough time actually unpacking those that live CV, building that live CV and really thinking about what that has given us. So if you are like me and you answered that question, no, do you have a life CV? Maybe that's something that you should put on your priority list for today to go and build your life CV. And I don't think it's something that you can achieve in one sitting. I think you will then go, you'll, you'll have to do this over two or three sittings and it will grow. You'll have to go back possibly to some uncomfortable places. Um, some times of your life where there was sadness. Um, and you're going to have to really articulate what that sadness drove in you, what experiences that shaped. How did that shape you as a person? Because again, we look at that in terms of a work CV and we have good managers who've shaped us and we've had bad managers who've shaped us. We've all had them. But they all shape us as a person. They all teach us things that we'd like doing, things that we don't want to do, the kind of person we want to be, the kind of person we don't want to be. They shape us. But what has shaped your life? What are the choices that you've made that shaped who you are today? So go away, go away and build your life CV. Start with your first recollection, your first memory that made you, made you change something, made you question something. We've all got those things. So that's the first question that I would like you to answer. And if the answer is no, to go and do it. And if, even if the answer is yes, when's the last time you looked at it? Start thinking about what you want your next two years of your life CV to look like. Because a lot of times I'm when I talk to clients and they're looking for, for new roles or they've got opportunities, we always start talking about the kind of life they want to lead in the future and does this role take them there? The second thing that I think is critical. And this is something that I do. Um, so I can answer yes to this question. Um, and this is where the two questions align. So what I do at the moment is, is, is the second part, which is, if you think there are 12 months in the year, what I'm challenging you all to do is to put in the diary every two months a weekend that's just for you. A weekend that is just all about things that you want to do, just for you. It can involve other people, but it's stuff that you want to do. Now, this is something that I didn't do in the past, and it fundamentally affected my well-being, my happiness, uh, the person I was. And it is something I will not sacrifice on. It is what I need and want. So every two months, I do a weekend, two, three days that are purely about what I enjoy doing. Recently, uh, about a couple of weeks ago, I spent three days uh, hiking in the mountains. Absolutely loved it. And I'm doing a five-day trail um, in September. And there you go. So July, I did my thing. And or September, I'm doing my, my trail. Every two months, I put aside a period of time which is just about me. It's about my needs and my wants, the things that I know are important to me. What's important to me about the trail? Well, first and foremost, no one can get hold of me. You are desolate. There's no mobile phone reception. You are complete on your own. I get a complete social media technology detox. No one can get hold of me. I get peace and quiet. I get complete control over my life. It is so vital for Mark Hopkins in order to recharge that way. Now, let's think about that. So if you're going to do once every two months, okay, so that's six that's six memories a year you're creating. Now, I'm 39. I'm probably halfway through my life. 
So imagine how many incredible memories I'm gonna be creating. Over the next 10 years, I'm gonna be creating 60 memories. 20 years, 120 amazing memories. 240 new crazy things, minimum I'm gonna be doing if I'm doing a weekend every couple of months. Now that is so exciting. That's something that is gonna then align to my life CV because it starts bringing everything together. I start being the, living the life I want to live. I start doing the things I want to live and do. I put a smile on my face, I recharge the batteries, I come back and I am becoming and will strive to become the best dad I possibly can be. And I know I'm a better dad when I'm a better person. And I know what I need to be a better person, I just need sometimes mark time. I need time to do the things that I want to do. So there's two really interesting questions for you to consider. The first question is, do you have a life CV? Have you captured those moments in your life that have shaped you, created those experiences that make you who you are? Just think of the stories that you can tell once you build out your life CV. The second question to consider, do you have something planned in two months time in the diary? Not just a pipe dream, not something you're thinking about, planned. In the diary, committed to, deposit paid, whatever it is, but in the diary. Do you have something in the diary in two months' time? And the following two months' time? And the following two months' time? Now, the, if the answer to no is no to both those questions, then you've really got to press pause on your life. You've got to press pause on your day and actually start taking some control. Because otherwise, what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen? Well, you all know what's going to happen. You're going to wake up in five years' time and you're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do. You're going to have missed out on all those potential memories and experiences. Your body's not going to be able to climb Kilimanjaro, Everest. It's not going to be able to do it in a few years' time. The time to do it is now. So the time to plan is now. The time to put things in the diary is now. The time to commit is now. Commit now, don't wait till tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we know what today is all about. So two questions. If you do not have a life CV, go and build it today. Start capturing those experiences that shape who you are. Go and put something in the diary for the next two months. Go and pay for it. Go and tell your mates if you want to do it, your mates do it on your own. Put it in the diary for two months time and have your time. Live the life that you want to lead, be the person you want to be and smile from ear to ear in terms of living the life that you've always dreamt of, but live it today. So that, I wish you a phenomenally productive day building your life cycle, your life CV and excitement around researching exactly what's going to go in your diary in two months time. I'm <laughs> sorry.